Hi there, everyone. I'm Tran. Um, I'm based in Boston in the US, and I identify as a 1.5 um, Vietnamese American um, multimedia artist and cultural organizer. And I'm really excited to share with you all today this project that I've been working on, um, titled 1975 Vietnamese Diaspora Healing Memorial Project in Boston. And this project is, um, is slated for the year 2025 and possibly beyond that um, because it commemorates the 50th anniversary of the end of the war in Vietnam and the beginning of the Southeast Asian and Vietnamese diaspora. Um, this project is, is a long time coming. It's a project that um, has really been truly community um, created and led um, with, with the focus on, on really arts and the intersectionality. Um, so it's part of a greater commemoration initiative um, that involves the healing memorial, public art taking place in, um, in Boston that, that will travel, oral history kind of collection, preserving of community narrative very intergenerationally, and then the activation of communities through workshops, through education, and the arts and the culture. So all of these components creates this commemoration initiative that, that extends really beyond um, borders and thinking about um, to, you know, the, the, the theme of, of healing and what that means for a community that have you know, been through, through so much. So currently the team um, is myself as the lead artist, as the creative, and my um, partner Lin Fung Vu, who has a background in mental health, um, community kind of partnership, and, um, in, and she's also studying Asian American studies. So we're both um, of the 1.5 second generation, someone who grew up, you know, people who grew up locally in the community, and then thinking about what it means to create a project to really elevate, to amplify, and preserve um, memories. So a little bit about my background as, a, as an artist, a cultural organizer, um, my, my really methodology and, and, and really strategies is, is really rooted in community organizing, is really making sure that I work alongside my communities as co-creators, um, bringing them on from the beginning, not at just you know, certain stages, um, but really having it be truly um, collaborative, making sure um, the voices are, are amplified, people are compensated for their time, their narrative, and really um, creating you know, really trust-based relationships so that people truly know one another and is truly reflective of the local community to amplify talent and to make sure that we are, you know, um, creators of, of the narrative that we want to amplify. So this is a, a mural project that we that we did um, that is, is and for by the community and then we ended up having kind of an opening kind of block party and it's, it's a permanent um, mural that's, you know, that's right in the, in the community and it's, it's, it's really a testament to, to the collectiveness of really collaboration with community. Um, this is another project I did titled 39 and it's an homage to the 39 Vietnamese bodies that were found in a refrigerated truck in the UK in 2019. And the theme of this is really thinking about border crossing, um, displacement as well as migration, what it means to, to really honor lives um, through these perilous journeys that happens you know, on a daily, regular basis, but what it means um, for people to put their lives on the line in search of, of better lives, of you know, different opportunities, and, and really truly the idea of chosen migration. And I really, really wanted to honor the 39 lives using these conical hats and thinking around the intergenerational aspect of that and how, how does that kind of reflect kind of the, the choices that are, are, that are made you know, worldwide. So the what of the project. So for the 50th anniversary um, of the end of the war, we want to create a, mem a memorial in collaboration with our community that foster remembrance and healing within our communities and beyond. And this is in a contrast to their, you know, their existing memorial, especially pertinent to the war. But what I've noticed and um, is out there is that part of the ecosystem is that it's very militaristic based and very geared towards, you know, veterans, individuals. And so for us, we really want to create different narrative that really has an impact on families and communities and the legacy of war and what that means. So for us, this is, you know, um, in thinking about the, the existing <laughs> landscape, thank you. Um, so Viet Thanh Nguyen, um, Vietnamese writer and professor, he writes, all wars have fought twice, the first time in the battlefield, the second time in memory, and I would add a third time intergenerationally, that's passed on. And so for us, this is really the crux of this project, what it means to, to honor the, really the legacy that, that still continue, that still affects so many communities, so many residents that are um, around us. 
So the why, um, we want to pay homage to the families and communities impacted by the war, and this includes both Vietnamese and also non-Vietnamese too. We've been so affected in, you know, um, by kind of really this narrative. Um, we want to address healing grief, intergenerational trauma, and really build ongoing engagement. So we really see this commemoration not just as, as a one-off thing, but something that continues, that really activates existing work already. We, we don't want to just, you know, re-expose like, oh, things and really bring out um, so much, you know, again, that relive trauma too, but how do we build ongoing and really think about the possibility of, of transformation and of, of, of really um, generative healing. And then lastly, to, as a corrective, you know, there's a lack of, especially in, in Boston, the US, and I'm sure elsewhere too, really um, stories of equity, of you know, who's in, in charge of, of these narrative. Um, I know in the US, there's a lot of existing conversation around racist monuments and memorials, and that, that needs to be taken down, and some have. But the real question is, what happens in this place and who are able to really, you know, be there at the table when a lot of these projects are happening and how do we bring alongside community as co-creator and not just, you know, um, participants. So that's really the crux of that. And so we, we see this project as really a, a solution in that direction of how do we recreate and think about really ongoing um, of work that needs to be amplified. So I've been thinking um, a lot about the visually the connection kind of to the homeland how do i create kind of you know the visual representation of that that encompasses diaspora really creating a home away from home and it's especially a narrative that so many communities around the world can really re resonate with it especially through the passage of, of war and the displacement and migration of that um, so here are um, images of traditional um, bamboo huts and um, straw houses especially pertinent in southeast asia so thinking about the kind of the, the recreation of that of creating kind of that sanctuary space in, in a different kind of home environment. Um, next ones are um, prototype elements um, that I begin kind of building. Again, these are still really preliminary because we want to create a community process that really, um, you know, engage um, feedback and, and engagement. So um, some of the the prototypes here are kind of again the traditional straw houses the middle is a nod to the the boat refugee experience and the uh, furthest one on the right is kintsugi this japanese concept of of literally um usually in ceramics of mending together what's broken using kind of gold glue so that's something i've been exploring around how do i kind of showcase the lived experience of that but really create it in a way that um, really uplifts the community resiliency and to really bring our communities together. And another element is that um, I'm exploring um, holographic and projections as part of the work so that it can literally travel across borders and to really, um, again, foster more healing conversations amongst communities, both in the US and also internationally too, to, so that the, the memorial itself isn't only in one place, but how, how can it travel? How can it you know, reach, reach others? Um, so the who, so this, as um, mentioned, this project is truly collaborative and we, we mean that in that we're, we're building a coalition right now of, you know, different partnerships locally, grassroots, and thinking about how do we collaborate and to build the support from the ground up. So, you know, reach out to different, you know, organization that I myself have, you know, um, worked with over years and really thinking about who are the stakeholders directly in our communities that need to be a part of this project and needs to be at the table. And then also with that, including funding partners, thinking about kind of the, the funding partnerships behind how do we get this off the ground, but really thinking about who are truly kind of the stakeholders, not, not just, you know, in partnership, but in, you know, financially, in the investment in this kind of really social impact work. Um, so the how. So right now we're in kind of the research, 3D modeling stages of that, building kind of coalition, support cultivation, and then thinking beyond that, kind of the permitting, implementation, maintenance, care, and sustainability. And I really see this as a, it's kind of a roadmap in, um, in a project like this that may take, you know, a lot longer, but really thinking about kind of the vision of that and how, how that plays out. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's the project. I'd love to engage with you more if you have any questions. Thank you.